What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Open Door Creative. Today, we're gonna take a drive with Nick Kidd. What's up, guys? All right, so uh, the reason I really was excited to get Nick on the show is because he's a junior AD, and that's kind of around where I think a lot of you are trying to get. So I thought he'd be the perfect one to start off and kick off this series um, of advertising professional interviews that I'm gonna be doing. So uh, yeah, <laughs> tell them a little bit about yourself. Yeah. Uh, what you do, stuff like that. So I, as Kevin said, I'm an associate art director for the Audi and Samsung accounts at Tracy Locke. And uh, I've been working with Kevin for like, what, three years now? Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah. Um, I think my story is kind of similar to where a lot of you will be when you get out of college. I'm still kind of in the beginning stages of my career. Um, but it, it doesn't take it doesn't go as quickly as I think a lot of people think. Yeah. What do you want to What do you want to know about me? I mean, just your journey, like how you got into advertising. I think it's important to know how different people got to yeah. where other people want to be, and that way you realize that every story is different. Everyone yeah. has a different kind of path. Um, Absolutely. So, what was your path into advertising? So, I think a lot of people think that in order to get into advertising, you have to be, you know, an artist from the beginning. Yeah. You go to art school, portfolio school, and just that just didn't. That's not the case for me at all. Mm -hmm. I went into, I went to college, went to Texas Tech University, hoping to be a doctor. I wanted to be a neurologist. I just love the brain. I love the mind. Which is such a crazy 180 for Matt. It was a crazy thing to tell my parents. Yeah, I'm not going to be a doctor anymore. I'm going to be an artist. But uh, yeah, I realized I wasn't. I didn't want to be a doctor. It just wasn't the life for me. Mm -hmm. uh, but I still love the mind. I love sociology, and I love um, the way kind of marketing works. Sure. Um, and I think I kind of always knew that part at least. Um, so I went into psychology, and then into marketing, and then I later realized. Um, that I liked advertising and mm -hmm. design because I was making book covers for my friends. Um, oh, that's cool. Just for fun. Um, I never really considered it as like a yeah, just like career. a hobby. Kinda. Yeah, so it was like a little like hobby thing. That's cool. Um, like I was never an artist. Like I was never did sketching. I never did drawing. Yeah, I, I wasn't never... a great drawer either. Like, you know, my parents would tell me I'm a good drawer, but yeah. was I a really good artist and sketcher and drawer and painter yeah. compared to everyone else in these art schools and stuff? Probably not. Yeah. So. I think I just eventually had to give myself more credit than that. But like, mm -hmm. anyway, like I, I, I figured out I wanted to go into advertising and at that point I realized like I'm way behind because it's these other kids who have been doing Photoshop since they were seven. Yeah. And people who have who've known yeah. they wanted to be artists their whole lives. And yep. that's what I'm competing against. Yep. So in college, I just, I the first step was to find mentors. So I tried to find people who were better than me. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I signed up for the, uh, Scholastic advertising competition. Oh yeah, in yeah, yep. Um, and I. What was your client during that? Uh, Mary Kay. Okay. And we got like third in nationals. Nice. Yeah, so it was pretty sweet. That's cool too to start on a product that's uh, or to do a whole campaign for a product yeah. that is like way out of your wheelhouse where you're yeah. definitely not the target. Yeah. I'm um, gonna do the whole 360 campaign around it too. That's cool. But uh, the other thing too is I, I started kind of freelancing in a sense so I every day I go on YouTube and I learn like a new skill mm -hmm. I would like try to learn something new I would try to um, kind of like learn a new logo or a new technique sure and get better at it yep um, and then I did 99 designs which like, oh god it's the worst as um, a designer rule number one do not give in to 99 designs don't do it just uh, don't do it. If you've never done design in sure. your life, it's great because it's like baptism by fire. Yeah, but it just rips <laughs> off every artist that so tries to do something. Um, but yeah, that's that's what I did. So I did like hundreds of designs by the time I had gotten out of college. So I'd done pretty well for that part. Mm -hmm. So I kind of caught up with a lot of my competition. That's good. So you got better by just doing, basically. Yeah, I just worked hard, really, yeah. at the end of it. I, I tell people I went to YouTube University. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I then, mean, so are some of the people that are watching this right yeah, now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I uh, got an internship. Um, I got two internships, actually, but the first one was all the way in San Diego. And the way I got oh, it shit. is interesting. So I went to the inside competition, and like all my friends after the, the, uh, the competition went out to go get drinks. Uh huh. I went and found the judges. Nice. And okay. I, um, I, because one of the judges worked at, um, uh, oh gosh, who does the advertising for, I think, Coca-Cola and Jeep? I mean, a lot of people. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so it was like, anyway, there's like this one really big agency that I just loved. Yeah. 
Um, and I just like, I found the judge who worked there and uh, I fanboyed all over him. <laughs> so you sucked up, is what I you're just, saying. Oh, I just like, it was so honor, nice and honored to meet you. Yeah. And like, I was like, do you have any advice? Like, do I need to go to portfolio school? I asked him a ton of questions and he yeah. was like, he kind of like wiped me off. Like, all right, yeah. yeah, yeah. But the guy right next to him was paying attention. Oh, nice. And he worked at IDEA in San Diego uh -huh. and he answered all my questions. Nice. He, he was, I asked, do you think I should get a, go to portfolio school? Well, send me your portfolio and yeah. I'll tell you. And that opened up conversation. So yeah. like, I guess like the first lesson there is like, you never know who's listening. So yeah. always perform your best. And I think ask questions. I yeah. mean, it's, it's so funny how many people just want to talk about their experience. Uh, yeah. That's why we're kind of doing this thing in the first place. Yeah. And just like give you their story and their perspective on things. You'd be super surprised how many people are willing to help. Yeah, that's the other thing. Like when you ask for an interview, if you're having trouble like getting into the the field, like instead of asking for an interview, ask if you can interview them. Yeah. And like you can say like, hey, Kevin, I was wondering if I could ask you a few questions about what you do and your and how you got there. You're gonna want to talk about that. Yeah. So how did you get into Tracy Locke and stuff like that? What was that process like? So Tracy Locke was probably like the fifth place I interviewed. Okay. Um, and the way I got into it is I like actually one of the guys who I worked with at IDEA kind of recommended me. Uh -huh. But even after I applied, like it took forever. Sure. So I like attacked Tracy Locke's social media. I like contacted. Like you did a bunch of comments on it, or uh, I basically sent like sent Twitter posts to them a bunch. <laughs> um, and then I uh, I contacted a couple of like the CDs and then like the hiring managers. I just constantly like you know yep. like the uh, what is how does it go the the noisy bird gets the worm or whatever. Sure, the squeaky sure. wheel gets oiled away. Yeah, sure. Basically, I just tried to make as much noise as I could yeah. so people would notice me. And finally, they called me um, and I they said, we would love to talk to you about your portfolio. And so I like met with all of them and I, I, I came ready. Yeah. I like, I gave a full presentation about my portfolio and like- Did you wear a suit or something? I wore too? like, I yeah. wore like a full suit. All right, was, just so you guys know, when you're interviewing for a creative position, a suit is not required. You can wear a tie, you can look nice, but like, don't like look like an account manager. No offense, account <laughs> managers that are watching. I looked like a knife salesman. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I was ready to go. Um, but yeah, it, so basically what ended up happening though is I got in, I started working with Kevin actually. I was uh, a contract designer. So they just wanted to test me out and see yep. what I was doing. And I, at the time, had an ego. Like I was killing it. You don't I, have one anymore? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I was just doing so well at school. I was better than all my other kids. I was like, I'm not just a designer. I'm ready to be an art director. Yeah. yeah it's like, I, I think a lot of people when they come out of college, especially if they come out of art school or portfolio school, they have this attitude that they're like, they're ready to be a yeah, creative director. Yeah, and they're director. entitled to it and all this stuff. Yeah, yeah and, and, and you kind of, we, 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 in school, we teach people this type of leadership mentality. Yep. And with it comes this sort of, this little bit of entitlement yep. by accident. No, absolutely. Yep. Um, I mean, even today, I still meet lots of interns and new kids who just yep. think like they're ready to be a director. Yeah, exactly. And I had that same mentality and I came in and I was ready to be the greatest, greatest designer I could be. And I was not great. <laughs> so I, I was very, like I had, my mind was right. Yeah. And my creat creative mentality was right, but I was slow. At the time, did you think you were great? Uh, I thought, I, I knew I had a lot to learn. Yeah. But I thought that I at least knew what I was doing. And then you get into the field and you sure. realize you're like, oh God, I have way over my head. Sure. Like I thought for sure, I was like ready, I was so good. And now looking back at myself, I'm like, I oh, was awful. I was an idiot. I was so bad. At, at the time, yeah, at the time, I guess I thought I was okay. But yeah. now, look, but like, I just couldn't compete. And one of the biggest things that I couldn't compete with was versioning yep. and making a multiple rounds. And rounds. Like, yeah. I tried to get everything right and perfect the first try. Yeah. Whereas you guys were knocking out like 30 different designs in an hour. Yep. And I just wasn't ready for that. And then that's when I got pushed over into studio. Yeah, so that's the, this is the big uh, shift that I kind of want everyone to realize. It's like, 
you came in there completely expecting like you were going to be an art director and that was the path. Mm -hmm. But then you got this other opportunity because it was a more uh, steady gig yeah. to be a studio designer. So tell us kind of about that and how that, you know, progressed you to where you are. So if, for those of you who don't know what a studio designer is, it's essentially someone who takes the artwork, at least at Tracy Lock, yep. takes the artwork of the art directors um, and they clean it up and they make everything perfect so when it goes off to the vendor or to the printer um, it looks exactly the way it did on screen on paper yep. so we'll, we'll take like one idea or concept that an art director makes and we'll version it out to like 30 different ways for billboard for poster for window cling for everything um, so that way it's consistent throughout mm -hmm. um, and so like you need to know all your hotkeys you need to know you know how ink interacts with the paper with different colors and different yep. um, printing techniques and so you basically need to know how to make something from start to finish um, so I really needed to learn the basics mm -hmm. and that oh god I will never I guess take for granted the information that I learned mm -hmm. during that yep and I guess what it really, the whole point of that is you need to learn the basics and you need to put your head back in the dirt and you need to learn the, to do the things that no one else wants to do. Yeah. Like I was doing the designs and the boring stuff and the just, uh, it's, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of quick work and you need to learn how to work quickly and efficiently. Well, and now you have so much more appreciation for yeah. the people in studio because mm -hmm. you know, you know, the grind and how hard yeah. that is. So I think that jump is just, you know, good for you. I mean, I think a lot of people, they, they try to skip the basics. They try to skip straight to directing or they try to skip straight to being a great designer, but you need to know why to use certain colors or why to use certain layers or certain yep. techniques because you may design something cer a certain way and then all the way, when it gets all the way to the end of the project, you realize, oh, this isn't gonna work anymore. Yep. Um, so you need to learn how to I guess eat dirt. You yeah. Know? I mean, yeah, eat shit. What's Gary V says? Like, eat shit for the short term so you can eat caviar yeah, for the rest of your life. Eat caviar for the really rest of your life. Yeah. And, and that's really I don't the like truth. caviar, by the way. <laughs> I don't either. <laughs> but it's, it, it makes a, it it makes a good, good point, though, because, yeah. I, like, the, what, what I say instead is that the best farmers know how to make the best dirt. That's and fair. Because, so for example, how many sayings like this do you have? <laughs> oh, my dad. My dad has like all the sayings. But I guess I just inherited that from That's him. That's funny. But uh, like for example, so you want to make uh, like a print design. You need to know, should I do overprint? Should I use 100K black or should yeah, I use rich, rich black? black. Yep. Should I use um, CMYK versus RGB? Yep. There's all so much like, technical shit that you just, that is such a need to know thing so that as even as an art director so you can create things the way you envision them yeah well that's only going to happen if you have a studio artist that is aligned with what you're what you're trying to do yeah and like i think the the, the point of what i'm saying that is a lot like a lot of that when you're in school is covered in like chapter one and then never covered again yeah and really you need to spend more time learning, learning your foundation mm -hmm. And that's so talk about that grind and how then you got back you know onto the art director path. so when you're in studio you kind of have to make yourself noticed um, so one of the things that I did a lot was I volunteered for different projects mm -hmm. so I would contact other art directors all the time and I would say like hey is there something I can help you with yeah. is there something I can stay late and do is there um, any projects that you need an extra hand on and, and I would constantly do that and then other thing I would do is instead of just having communication over the phone over email mm -hmm. I would get off of my get out of my office walk towards the art directors and have a face-to-face -face conversation with them yep um, so that way it's not just throwing a problem over a wall mm -hmm. and just forgetting about it is trying to solve a problem from beginning to finish and having a conversation with well, the people you want to work with. Yeah, I mean, you're building a relationship with possible people down the road that you're going to have way more face-to-face -face And with. it took me two years to get out of that. Yep. And... Late I, nights. Late nights, staying late, like, staying, like, not just, like, a little bit. Oh, I stayed 30 minutes late to finish up a yeah. project. No, I stayed, like, like three to four late. to five hours late every day yep. to make sure his artwork looked great. And so that way he learned to trust me later whenever he needed an art director. Yep. 
And that's really what it comes down to. Yep, and like, then you got the, you got your name called and, mm -hmm. and you were ready to go. I was ready to go. So it, um, just to kind of, uh, more than just a story, what advice do you give other people trying to, to get into the game, trying to, you know, get noticed, become an art director? Uh, what kind of advice do you have for, you know, for other people? Do you want to leave it to me? No, you can keep, <laughs> we're going through the drive-thru. We're going through the drive-thru, we'll get some chicken. <laughs> do you want a sandwich? The... Yeah, I want a sandwich. <laughs> you always get... When you go to Raising Cane's, if you get a chicken sandwich <laughs> instead of the chicken fingers, you're a serial killer. Like, <laughs> like the sandwich. No, no one gets the sandwich. If you want a good chicken sandwich, you go to Chick-fil-A. <laughs> if you want good chicken fingers, you go to Raising Cane's. That's just the way it is. If you want to eat healthy, you don't go to either. Today, we're not eating healthy. <laughs> Uh, all right, yeah. yeah, so what advice do you have for... So my advice um, is something that I've learned over time, um, and it's take time to be a follower before you be a leader. So mm -hmm. always be a student, and that means go find a mentor. Um, if, you, if you really are trying to be a great leader, you need to learn how to follow other leaders. No, you need to know sense. what other leaders are great, um, and the way you be a great follower is you learn to be needed. So you learn the basics and you learn the stuff that nobody else wants to do and you learn to be willing to, always be willing to stay late, always be willing to just do crappy stuff. Yeah. And just be a shoulder that other people can lean on. Yep. And when you do that, you become indispensable and that's how leaders are born. Nice. All right, so just to kind of end this thing, uh, do you have anything to plug? Do you have a website people can check out, reach out to you? Yeah, so I actually run a blog and I uh, try to give advice to people, not just about advertising, but just really about um, life. leadership and life and just any sort of life lessons that I've learned along the way. So if you want to see my portfolio and you want to see that blog, go to nickkid.net. Cool. That's it. Well, thanks for uh, coming on to the show today. Yeah, man. Um, super excited to have you. Um, I think it was a really good first glimpse into the industry because you are essentially in the place that a lot of people want to get. You know what I mean? That's that's the start, and it's a it's all uphill from here. So, yeah. cool. Thanks for watching.